Let's have a look at this. And after the previous lesson that you just did, I think you will find this a breath of fresh air. No complicated algebra here. We've already met. We've already met the rectangular hyperbola, but we'll just kind of have a look at a couple of its features and then uh, be able to recognize it in the future. Okay. So, do you recall what is it that defines what is it that makes a rectangular hyperbola rectangular? The asymptotes are at right angles. In other words, they are at rectangles. Okay? So if you have the asymptotes at right angles, algebraically what that means is that instead of x squared on a squared minus y squared on b squared, right, we're going to have a and b being identical. Does that make sense? So in other words, remember how we were saying a and b, they are about how much you stretch out horizontally and stretch out vertically. So this means you are stretching out at exactly the same amount. Okay, does that make sense? So let's draw a brief picture of this thing. Now, before I put this thing on, I want to make sure this is accurate. And um, therefore, I want to put the asymptotes first rather than after the fact because just generally speaking, when I myself draw by freehand, if I draw an arc like that, 99% of the time, I end up with something kind of parabolic, right? In other words, it won't approach asymptotes, right? It's going to curve away from an asymptote. So therefore, it's in my interest to put the asymptotes on first, okay? Now, knowing that they are at right angles, we showed before that the two asymptotes for this guy are going to be y equals x. plus or minus x, right? Here's y equals x, and I'm going to have y equals minus x going down here, okay? What other features can we read off from the equation of the hyperbola? The directrices. Okay, I can read off the directrices and I can also read off the foci. And lastly, I can read off the intercepts, right? Now, for the purposes of graphing, out of those three, probably the most important ones are the... Oh, we said the intercepts. Got to go pass through those, right? So how do I work out the intercepts of this thing? X equals zero. Okay, so x equals zero for this particular hyperbola, because it's oriented this way, x equals zero will have no solution, so we knew that already. So therefore, for y equals zero, this term disappears, you're getting x squared equals a squared, so the two values you're going to get are x equals a plus or minus a, right? So I'm just going to label that as a and that as negative a. In theory now, even though I should put on my directrix and also my focus as well, in theory now I have enough to draw the shape at least accurately, right? So the way I tend to do it is remembering that at these two vertices, right, it turns around horizontally. So I draw a vertical line there, right, because you get a vertical tangent at those points, and then I approach that asymptote. You don't have to draw very far in order to start approaching that, and I do the same thing over here, okay? It's just like um, Same deal on the left. So I'll draw, I've got the vertical ready. I will approach the asymptote on the bottom and I will approach the asymptote on the top. And there is our beautiful rectangular hyperbola. Okay? You will notice, just have a careful look at the curvature of the hyperbola. You see, it's a lot shallower than had I just drawn this freehand, like I said, I usually end up drawing parabolas. They're not approaching <coughs> asymptotes at all. These are getting steeper and steeper and steeper forever. Okay? And that's not what I want. So that's why putting in these asymptotes is very critical to getting the accuracy of your hyperbola on the line. <coughs> okay. <coughs> like I said, we can add on our, um, our directrices and foci. We'll worry about that a bit later. Right now, I want to point out um, kind of the important, the other important detail about this, which is that Remember, if I gave you any hyperbola uh, and I said, okay, tell me some features about this, what's the first thing you write down to work out like the features, like foci's directrices? Oh, the first thing you write down is that identity, that equation, which connects the two proportions with the eccentricity, right? Now, usually that starts with a b squared, but I don't have a b squared. So I'm going to write a squared equals E squared outside of, now it's a hyperbola, right? E so good. So E squared minus 1, because we recall that in order, the eccentricity starts from, sorry, did I get it right? Yeah, okay. Uh, it starts with a circle, 
then it goes to the ellipse, then the parabola, then the hyperbola. So the hyperbola is going to have the biggest eccentricity. It's e is greater than one. So that's why it has to be. Sorry, that's that's a very bad e. Yeah. That's why it has to come first. Okay. Now what do I do? E squared equals one. I can divide through by um, a squared, right? So I'm going to get one equals e squared minus one. So then making e squared the subject, I get this. And because the eccentricity is a ratio between two positive things, I can just say, well, there's one value for this eccentricity, namely root 2. Because eccentricity is positive. Okay. Equals. Abhiman? Wouldn't it be equals because when e equals 0, then it would be so cool. Oh, I see what you mean. Um, no, because we saw that eccentricity being zero is kind of a weird special case. It actually kind of breaks the definition of what eccentricity is, right? We saw that if you, you know, when I, I got out the cone, right, and you see, okay, well, if I level off my section, I'll get the circle. So the circle is a conic section, but you, you simply cannot put zero into the eccentricity. It's a ratio by definition. So even though I said e equals zero, I really should say the limit as e approaches zero is this. Uh, but e can't happen. So should we think we I see what you mean. Um, yes, it should because I define this as a hyperbola. However, all I'm trying to exclude is negative root 2. It's just a negative. Like I'm just trying to look at a square root and say, well, which one do I want? Um, e is greater than 1 is true. Um, but I don't need to appeal to the fact that this is a, that this is a hyperbola to draw that conclusion here. Is that all right? Okay, so all rectangular hyperbolas, every single one, has an eccentricity of root 2. 